Welcome back to episode 43. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it's like an intro. Like, oh, okay. Uh, did you just <laughs> hype yourself up? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, it's like kind of a Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. I thought Jeez. you were doing like the Halo theme song over there or something. We're rolling sure. with it now. Yeah. That's official. That is official. It's live. And well, I guess like all the build up <laughs> last week. <laughs> <laughs> we <gotta start>. <laughs> <laughs> I promise it wasn't my fault this time. Yeah. Welcome back to episode 43 of the Loggerhead Golf Podcast. And uh, after a, I would say, almost borderline disappointing performance by Anthony Kim, did Liv just pull off the greatest marketing advertisement? It, I mean, AK didn't play all that well. We kind of suspected that was going to happen. He hadn't played in, what has it been, 10, 12 years? But oh, how many? I feel like the number goes up every week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah next week it's going to be 32 years since he's played golf. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, how many? You, I think you had done some research. You found out how many more views or clicks uh, Live Golf got because of AK, essentially. Yeah, I, I dug some deep. All right, I dug deep into Wait, the math. Uh, before you get into that, what did AK shoot? 76, 76. And what was his third round score? 74. I, honestly, I don't think that's that bad. Good enough for last place. I mean, yeah. Technically not last place because they had a couple WDs. No. So. <laughs> he finished 54 holes. Yeah, he, he played the entire. Did not miss the cut. Didn't miss the cut. <laughs> but he showed, uh, like, if you watched it, he hit some, he still hit some good shots. I mean, he hit some bad shots. He hasn't played golf in a while. Well. Official golf. He hasn't played that kind of golf in a while. And, and Steve's going to probably hate me for saying it, but I'm sorry, you're playing your gambling match with your buddies back home in Vegas. It's not the same. It's not the same thing as playing a professional golf event where I mean, the probably, world can see every shot you It's probably hit. the first time he's played golf in a polo in 10 years. I will say, <laughs> yeah, I'll say I, didn't, I did not like his outfit. You, I didn't like how he dressed. Yeah, and I think... I could probably get by the shirt being untucked. The antics, but at least tie your shoes up. The the antics, (laughs) the the kind of antics that, and the way he acted, like he had a chip on his shoulder. It's like, Bo, no one has a no no what? Yeah, no one's praying for your downfall, dude. So what chip do you have on your shoulder? The entire golf world is pulling for you. Let's be honest. Was was yeah yeah. So now, as we kind of start this topic with, did did Anthony Kim or Liv pull off the greatest marketing? why don't you tell us the parameters behind that? So it kind of piqued my interest. Liv saw a record-breaking 2 million uh, viewership like at their peak this week. So typically they average about 140,000. YouTube about 60,000. CW, it varies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the reason it got me thinking was the Super Bowl. Right. For a 30-second ad this past year, it was $7 million. And the average viewership for the Super Bowl ads, so not the actual game, is between the ballpark of seven to ten million. If it's coming right off of like a, essentially like let's say they cut to commercial, Mm -hmm. that first commercial still has about seventy to ninety million viewers, but about two commercials later, they drop all the way down to seven to ten million. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, that's a significant number, right? It's a huge drop. So, live at two million viewers gained. Or if let's say the number is ten million, that they're going to end up paying AK for the whole year. Right. So how many live events are there this year? Uh like eighteen. Yeah. yeah. So if you do ten million divided by eighteen yeah. versus what a thirty second Super Bowl ad is, yeah. Live just pulled off a phenomenal marketing strategy because instead of them buying TV time and TV commercials, they're paying Anthony Kim. They bought viewership. Correct. So I think from a marketing standpoint, regardless of what AK does. Like, let's say they only retained 30% of the $2 million. Right. That's perfect. It's right. still a huge uptick in their views. Now, maybe AK pulled off the greatest heist of all time. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a classic win-win yeah, here. Right. <laughs> you know, who you know, lost is probably the, the true fans of AK, um, which I have gripes with. I'll kind of say my piece on AK it's like before we said, live, rose-tinted but. glasses. You know, everybody, you don't remember the bad, right? You just remember the good, and everybody made— it seemed like he was a whole lot better than what he was. I mean, yeah, his career trajectory was n- no more than like a top sixty player in the world, right? I mean, he the way he it's not like he played in like ten events, won three of them, and then hurt himself and took his insurance buyout, right? Allegedly, <laughs> true, <laughs> <laughs> true. Uh, so that's where people are kind of like, well, he was on the trajectory of Tiger Woods. No, he was not. He was nowhere near the trajectory of Tiger Woods. 
I mean, we can we can rattle off what fifty golfers that have a better career. I was than like, what was his best game. finish in a major? I think like eighth. I was gonna say, I think he may be top ten. Like he, he didn't really. He won three no name tournaments. Well, he won the Wells Fargo. He won the Vegas tournament. Yeah, and then I think he won Palm Desert. So it's like he he didn't win significant events. Right. He, he was obviously trending in that that in that direction. He, but now he was Ricky Fowler before Ricky Fowler. Yeah. And what we mean by that, he was a company's dream for marketing. I'm a, I say a marketing. I mean, he's a billboard. He was yeah, a walking billboard, basically. and then his his kind of attitude, his 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 uh, swag, you so say, like that's kind of what was going on. What you got going on? I don't there? know, man. But I don't know how this he, thing um, works. That's where it's like when he showed up this week <laughs> in his practice rounds wearing t shirt, gym shorts, untied shoes. It's like, tell me you don't care without telling me you yeah. don't care. Well, there was that funny like meme of where uh, apparently he walked up to Rom and introduced or, or shook Rom, oh, saying that Rom thought he was a fan. <laughs> you know? I mean, he did look like a bum, let's be honest. <laughs> oh my gosh. You, when I think of, and, and I'm stereotyping here. Right. Uh, <laughs> Be careful. When I think of somebody that lives in <laughs> Vegas, that's what you that, picture. That's that's what I picture. <clears throat> right then and there. They look like um, they can either go to breakfast or they they sat in a casino all night. <laughs> it'll be it'll be uh, interesting to see how well done. AK performs through the rest of the season. Well, we got right? Hong Kong this week, so I would suspect if. He's gonna he's gonna play well. He's gonna play well at some point. I feel like uh, some you of the shots he hit, he still hit good shots. He Tiger. made putts. What does Tiger like, prove throughout his career? I mean, the dude's had how many surgeries? He's oh, had you, you how can, many? You can come back. I'm talent. Talent's talent. Right. Right. Whether or not you know how to piece it in a round of golf, that's the that's the part where you need reps. That's why Tiger always says, "Yeah, I just need a few more reps, things like that, to clean things up." You know, the talent's there. Always have. What do you, uh, you think of his golf swing? Looks like classic AK. It's, I mean, there's a little bit of differences, but yeah, like it still looked like classic AK. So You can tell that he's, he didn't look comfortable with the modern driver. No, something looked off with the driver to me too. It looked very, um, from a from a teacher's perspective, it looked very late. It just looked like that club head was behind him for a yeah. long time. Yeah. And he was just trying to kind of like. Chase it and catch like, it up. Yeah. And which ultimately, that's why he played bad. Yeah, he hit the driver all over the place. Well, I think, he hit some good iron shots. Yeah. yeah, going into this week, he was testing, which he's had it, ten years of time to test golf clubs. But yeah. you know, he took three sets of irons with him, four sets of wedges, I think, five drivers, and two fairway woods. Which irons did he end up playing? He ended up playing Titleist, Titleist that's that's what for I thought. that week, but T one hundreds. He played his. I thought it was a six twenty MBs. He ended up playing T one hundred. No, yeah. Um, but he he went into the week saying he was going to play the Miras, the 101s, and mm -hmm. then I think he also had a set of baby blades, and that's what he's been playing with, and then made a last minute decision to kind of switch into the, the everything Tylus. That, yeah. that, that check cleared. Yeah. <laughs> and we know Tylus isn't known for paying players, right. so it's just weird how overnight you right before the pro am it's a full cool <sighs> bag you know of Tylus. What? I think I'm gonna play these. <laughs> Which but. hey, we would all do the same. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna try it all, but it's. I think it's safe to say that the that live golf got their money's worth out of AK in week one. Yep. Yeah, and AK. and hopefully he does end up getting back to form because I would love to see him play. I also say he's, I'm, he's, I'm he's playing him. two weeks in a row. This I think this week will be a completely different week. I think I, he'll play much better. I would be, I would say he probably shoots much closer to par this week. Yeah, I mean also Judd is not a it's not an easy golf course. How awesome did that golf course look though? I mean. They, they play a DP World Tour event there every yeah. year. So, I mean, all those courses in the Middle East look look awesome. True. I think it's just the, <laughs> the contrast between the desert and the green of the golf course. But that being said, where do we feel like the best golf is being played right now? Is it being played on the PGA Tour or is it being played in Live? It's definitely Live. You think I mean, it's Live? Because it's kind of slewed, right? <clears throat> as you look at Liv and you're talking about the golf course not being easy and look what Crushers did on Sunday. You know, 20 under par as a team yeah. on a difficult golf course. And they came back and won the team competition, didn't they? 20 freaking strokes. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then you look at PGA Tour and given like every sport always has a shift, right, where 
NASCAR scene at Dale Earnhardt, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, all those guys are tired, and then you have all these no names, and now they're starting to get recognized. Now the no names are yeah, are the names, they're, they're yeah. The names yeah. and I think that's where with the PGA Tour and Liv having this kind of basically uh, disagreement right now, mm-hmm. uh, which who knows they may come together soon, but I think that's where we're at with the tour is all your star players that are still left aren't playing in any of the events. Right. With the rule change about elevated events that they don't have to play anymore, you've seen a huge tournament cutback from, like, Tony Finau. You've seen a huge cutback from Jordan Spieth, huge cutback from Justin Thomas. So you've got a bunch of the... He might have to start playing tournaments. You had to catch back up for (laughs) FedEx, but I think we're starting to see that shift in the PGA Tour, and the guys coming up, like, don't get me wrong, they're still good golfers. Obviously, they're shooting 65 to 68. Austin Eckrow, that one yesterday... That won this week on the PGA Tour. He's a fantastic golfer and always well, had. Like, he the, was a top rated amateur coming out. When the Nap kid that won last week, I mean, he, like, there's still right, good golf yeah. being played it's on just the PGA not Tour. Electric golfer. It's, it's just, you know, it's not your superstar. In, in yeah. our world where we've been comparing the PGA Tour product to the Live product mm-hmm. right now, Live is proving. It, now, there's still a lot of really, really kind of just absolutely terrible reporters and golf media that are just shilling for the PGA Tour. But Liv is proving that if you put all the golfers in one place, cream is going to rise to the top and the product is going to be great. I, I and think we are you, seeing that on the Live Tour. We are not. A, we are not seeing that on the PJ Tour. PJ Tour hasn't had a big name. Hasn't had any of their top guys win a tournament this year. No, no, and really hadn't even been close. Yeah, right. I mean, they didn't. And usually, you get a guy that wins a century. Chris Kirk went out and won the century. Yeah, right. I, I'm. We've had. How many first-time winners now on the PJ Tour? I think five. It feels like every week. I mean, Hideki Matsuyama, I would say, is a big name, but like he's he's a big name. In, he doesn't in move the, the needle in the U.S., let's be honest. Not in the U.S. Yeah. Now, obviously, as a golf fan, big-time golf fans, they would understand that Hideki, he is a big name. Oh, I mean, for sure, he is. But but comparing product to product, Hideki's not that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's not a Bryson or a Dustin that just kind of like – Again, brings some energy to watching golf. And we, and we talk about this, right? Well, you know, Liv doesn't get the viewership. Well, no one – people don't care about the PGA Tour because a lot of people watch it. It's about who's playing and who's winning right. is why people care about the PGA Tour. Well, it's, duh, uh, obviously no one's going to watch any golf that's being played in Saudi Arabia and that's happening at 5 a.m. Right. Our time, Eastern. And, and I think that's the cool thing, 2 million – viewership and coverage started at 3 a.m. Yeah. U.S. time. For yeah. sure. Like, that's huge. I mean, so I, to, to end my rant, I mean. I've turned the volume off. I don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good throw. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, um, to end a good rant. <laughs> anyway. Essentially. <laughs> The PGA Tour needs one of their guys to win this week. They need McElroy or they need, they need Justin Sheffler, Thomas, or Justin Sheffler Thomas, to step Jordan Speed, because and, their, and shoot their, lights top, out. their top ten isn't doing shit right now. Sorry. And let's Crap. be honest, that that guy that wins needs to shoot extremely low. They need to go out and shoot a 59, a 60, 61, because look at what's happened on the Lyft Tour. Their best Joaquin, player in the world the Joaquin, is winning. The Joaquin Neiman, the, the Bryson DeChambeau, they're shooting those low 60 numbers or a 59, it seems like, every week on that tour. Joaquin Neiman. That's what I say. How good is the golf being played by Neiman and, and DeChambeau and, and some of the guys on the live right now? Yeah, it's it's just not even close. And right. not only that, guys on live that aren't big names are also winning other tournaments. Right. Right. Carlos Ortiz won in Oman, Oman, Oman uh, on, the, on the DP World Tour <laughs> the week before or the Asian Tour, right? So these guys are going to different courses, different tours and winning. Yeah. Now, Joaquin Neiman is playing by far. He is the best player in the world right now. Bar none. It'd be hard to argue against him. Now, he he's kind of For playing. For a results place game, it has he, to be. He's kind of playing that card of like he's, woe is me right now a little bit. But to be honest, he's got a reason to. Yeah. I mean, you know. Unlike Taylor Gooch. Who <laughs> oh, yeah, nothing. bless his heart. But <laughs> Oh, my gosh. He's got a few asterisks on his record right now, yeah. right? Well, like you talk about Joaquin, aside from Liv, he's flown to seven other events outside of Liv Golf and played in them and top ten in every single one of them. He's finished he's, outside. He's finished like thirtieth as his highest finish this year. Yeah. So he's making the effort for these. It's like so, the invites that he got from Augusta from the PJ Championship are very deserving invites because every yeah. week he's teeing it up at different places, shooting the same scores. He's competing. Yeah. 
Now, we actually, you saw, I guess it was, what, an hour ago, some news was dropped. Right? Yeah, so Greg Norman officially announced that Liv has uh, pulled their request for official world golf ranking points. Right, so they've withdrawn so, their so, Yeah, so the, they're withdrawing their entry. So, therefore, Liv, the, the, the battle, Liv is essentially, essentially given up on the battle. They're, right. sen- they're saying, we don't need you. Now, Greg Norman, in his statement, essentially said, you guys are doing everything in your power to not give us it, even though we're meeting the criteria. And for that reason, we're we out. don't We don't need it. We don't need it. What, is that, what do we feel like that means for the official World Golf Ranking? Uh, in my opinion, I think, well, it's always been skewed in, in general because Tiger can take two years off. Play one tournament, move up a thousand spots. <laughs> Literally, if he top tens, he goes to eighth in the world or yeah. 25th in the world after taking three years off or two years off. So, so you then look at like a Bryson or Joaquin chicken wing who goes <laughs> to all these other tournaments and wins and he barely moves up one yeah. spot. And he's not just winning by one shot or two shots. Like he's got dominant scores going into these Asian tour events and these other tour events. Oh, he's moving back. I think he's back to like 78th now. Who when he is? Joaquin. Yeah. Wow. So he won a tournament. When he won at Myco, he was 68th in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so he wins the tournament. And loses 10 back. spots. Louis Oostasian plays an event outside of Liv, wins that tournament, loses a spot. Yeah. So that math don't matter. I mean, you can't you can't tell me the field that was on the PJ Tour this week was had better. It, was, was a stronger field than what Liv had. In no you, way, shape, or form. In no way, shape, or form. It's not even close. Yeah. I don't care that there was 144 guys. Doesn't matter. You cut it down to 60 in ties. Yeah. So uh, it's just, it. I, I think we're starting to finally see the trickle down effect that. The PJ Tour is stuck in their ways. They're essentially saying they're never going to change. I think you're going to see there's a world tour that will start next year. I think. Well, I think the official world golf ranking. Obviously, it's always been flawed. Uh, I think this is eventually or essentially the end of the world golf ranking. I it think is what you'll see with the different tours. Um, obviously, the the PGA Tour already has their own ranking system within it with FedEx Cup, the FedEx yeah. Cup, and yep. they have their top sixty getting to these elevated events, and then you have just everybody else. The also runs essentially the midfield, and then you have the Liv will have their way of ranking their players, and you'll just see more of the tours kind of ranking themselves. And then for your major championships, you'll have more of these special invitees. I think um, where the committees that run those events you're gonna, are going to start to pick. You're going to have less. Exemptions. You're going to have less automatic qualifiers, and right. more. They're going to just go back to being solely invitational, like except special, the U.S. Open, and special the open invitations cha- or and special the open exemptions. I think you'll see new uh, new exemptions being made, made for um, winners of any major tour. They'll, they'll change the wording to where they can pull in, like a Joaquin Neiman that gets an automatic qualification into the U.S. Yeah. Open or the British and, Open. And the reason why I'm saying it's like crazy with all what's going on, because Joaquin Neiman won Riviera two years ago. Right. So, like, he, he wasn't <clears> – <throat> I mean, he, he was a top guy when he left. So it's not like he was winning no-name tournaments. So what he won invitations. You know, you know, I guess. And that's just that's just kind of where the golf world is. And I think you're starting to see that switch. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the owners of Live go out and buy the DP World Tour, especially now that the DP World Tour kind of got the can from the PGA Tour. Well, the DP World Tour is owned by the PGA Tour now, isn't mm-hmm. it? No, they're just a partnership with, like, qualifying spots they give the top 10 on the gp world tour pga tour status right. next year but they're not owned by it no kind of under the same umbrella though yeah i think it'll be hard for them to get that one i'm pretty sure dp world tour is is funded by aramco i'm pretty which sure it is, is as well too <laughs> <laughs> so actually almost the entire world is but <laughs> um but obviously the, the the consistency of the product that we see with live and i think this is kind of the final point that we've been kind of yeah, we, up. we said before this podcast we're going to kind of put it to bed, right? Put it to bed, yeah. Is that what we feel is with the product that Liv is providing right now, you have a consistent product. You, you might know, not like it. You may not like who, who's supporting it. You may not like the format. You may not like the shotgun start, whatever it is. But you know when you turn on a Liv golf event, the top 60 players that they have are going to be competing. And right now they're playing really well. Yeah. And then when you turn on a PGA Tour event, you have no clue who you're going to see, I mean, especially if it's not an elevated. You event. barely saw Rory McIlroy this week, and he was the best player in the field. Right. <laughs> um, 
quite honestly, with the creation of the elevated schedule on the on the PGA Tour, you have essentially said that the other events no longer matter. We're just doing it. We're just doing it to do it. And who's watching? Who's watching that event? Who's playing in it? Well, we watched it. I didn't watch it. There was to me, it wasn't we interesting. We watched like three holes while I was on yesterday. That's right. I, I, <laughs> I watched a couple of holes because it, they had a weather delay and had to finish on Monday, but. It wasn't an interesting product to me because I didn't know who was playing. That used to be a great tournament, too. It used to be a fun one to watch because of the bear trap. Oh, and that's that's what I wanted to kind of hint at is that you know there's a problem with the PJ Tour because I remember as a kid when they got to Florida and they started this Florida swing, every single major name played at PJ National. All right. Then they played at the Bay Arnold Hill. Palmer. Yeah. Right. Then they went to TPC Sawgrass because well, what are they gearing up for? For a while there, they had Doral in there, too. They, they had Doral in there, too. And no one took time off. No. They played five, that was a great six, swing seven of tournaments. weeks because those tournaments set up major season. Mm-hmm. That's why a majority of the major winners either won the Arnold Palmer or PJ National because how hard those golf courses are, it's ball-striking golf courses. Yeah. So, obviously, we feel like – Live, there may be some question marks with their format, but it's a consistent product, and we like that. Right now, the PGA Tour, they've got some work to do. Yeah. Quite honestly, I feel like. I why, think, why Why doesn't Live just move to dang 72 holes? Stubborn. Do you think? Do, do, do you they have, need to, though? I mean, I don't think they need to. Is that a requirement se. for anything? No, but that's just that's just the PGA Shills kind of argument right now that 54 holes isn't the same. And I was like, well, we crowned a 54 elevated event winner this I say, year. Honestly, but I don't have anything wrong I with the 54 holes. I personally don't. But, like, I feel like we're going to get to a point where both tours are, trying, are, are essentially dying on their own hill. So, like, which one's going to kind of give a little way? You know, and if I'm being honest, I probably th- I think that the 54 holes might be part of why they've gotten the players they've gotten, and have gotten them to commit to playing every shorter event. weeks. You don't have to play as much golf and an extra travel day. Yep. That kind of makes sense. No, well, you're right. You kind of probably need to play 54 holes if you're traveling the world. Right. Right. So, so I don't have any problem with that. I think I think eventually what we're going to see happen uh, is that these elevated events that the PGA Tour has created that's going to become the PGA Tour, and then everything else is going to get moved into Corn Ferry. The, the DP World Tour, the Corn Ferry Tour. It's going to be, you know, F1 and F2. True. I think DP World Tour is going to, I think Using it's just going to be, I think, I think it's going to be officially <laughs> called the World Tour. Yeah. And that's going to include the uh, the Australian circuit. The Asian uh, Tour. Asian Tour. Oh, got it. GGT, and they need to pay us for it. Global Golf Tour. Global Golf Global Tour. Global Golf Tour. I'm pretty sure that might be taken off. That, I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the world tour that Greg Norman first tried to start. Was called the Global Golf Tour, and they went bankrupt. Oh man. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uni- using an Edison bulb in the world of the LED. Kyle's <laughs> like, hear me out. I got a name I for got, you. I got some. Live, <laughs> but with an E. <laughs> Live. <laughs> Live action. Uh, so, anyway, we think there's a lot to kind of honestly, there's a lot to look forward to with the world of professional golf. It's just how is that going to change here in the next year or two? Well, I think the refreshing part is kind of like what we mentioned earlier, too, is the media has finally turned the corner on this. Yeah. Some of. Um, I would say 80% of not what we're Brandel seeing Shambly. now. <laughs> yeah. What we're seeing now, though, is we're not seeing the constant battering of live yeah. anymore. Now what we're seeing is, well, why instead of how? Well, I, I think you even take a look at some of McElroy's own comments. He's gotten a he's lot. He's gone of, full 180. Yeah, he's gotten a lot. A lot softer in his opinion of Liv as well, too. And a little harsher on PGA Tour. Yeah. I, I honestly, wouldn't surprise me to see another name get it, added to Liv at some point. I the only, what, the only thing that's stopping Rory is the Masters. Rory doesn't have an exemption into the Masters for much longer. This is his t- this is 10 years since I'm his just, last major win. I'm just saying. So, like, his 10-year major exemptions so are starting to run up. Maybe now, the granted, second week of how, April. How we'll fast would McRoy fall from world number two? I feel like it would be really hard for him to fall outside the top 50 because the it world, rank, a, yeah, the world ranking while, points yeah. have different, like, it essentially has an algorithm for the tournaments you've won previously and your form you've held from it, which he's held good form. It's just he hasn't won a major. So, like, I think he could leave and he would be fine, but yeah. I think he wants to, if he wins the Masters, he's gone. Yeah. Just I like John so. Rom. 
Just I like think on so. a, there's only one tournament that really matters. Yeah, it's the Masters. It's it's the Masters. And then I would say maybe, maybe the Open Championship. I mean, the, because all, of the history. All four of the majors matter, but one matters more than the other. Uh, you ask players, players don't mind missing the U.S. Open. It's a brutal the, week. Well, it's amateurs running a professional golf tournament. Yeah. But with the USGA. And that's why it's always, we, you get weird winners at U.S. Opens. <laughs> now, one thing we always talk about with PGA Tour is never getting to see golf. Mm-hmm. All we see is putting and a few drivers here and there. Yeah. What's happening this week in the world of golf to where we can actually oh, watch I any forgot about that. golf show? Yeah. We won't. I yeah, forgot live, about that. Live Hong Kong, so something new's coming out, or there's going to be a concept that's yeah. being brought to life. What are they calling it? Uh, it's on Live Plus, but it's you essentially can watch every single shot of every player, no matter where they're at on the golf course. Live is producing that, and they're using AI for it too. So you're essentially getting that PGA Tour Plus partner with peacock whatever right but you can actually watch the golf shot you can watch every shot hit every shot hit because you can select the team you can select the player Mm -hmm. so even if you don't want to watch everybody play you can just say okay i want to watch range goats and i I want to see what i want to see what ak does yeah you can bounce (laughs) around and click and actually watch the player you want to watch right because again going back to watching golf on tv i'm gonna watch joaquin newman's every t-ball yeah holy cow (laughs) he's smoking it um, there's a lot of golfers we don't want to watch. Like I don't. When Scotty Scheffler gets on a putting green, I want to switch, switch that over. <laughs> Lee, you want to switch Lee off Westwood of that? ain't doing it for me. So <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a cool Sorry. concept that <laughs> will see adopted across multiple yeah. platforms. But it's cool that they're at least going to be the first ones experimenting with. I, it. I think it's great uh, to be able to see every shot hit. I mean, we have that capability pretty much on the on some other tours, and we don't really the get Masters it. do it, does it? You know, yeah. they what started, a concept. They started that like <clears throat> watching golf on TV. Well, Kyle, it costs it costs yeah. some money, but I, I I gotta I mean, Liv is making efforts to provide a product that a golf fan would want to watch. Hey, LeBron's so. now an investor in that strategic sports group, so maybe he can fork over some some coin to get that PGA Tour nice. watch every shot. <laughs> All right. On that note, we're ready to do some show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk about LeBron without justice. So. <clears throat> yeah, he's gonna say greatest. Greatest, greatest mid-season of all, of tournament all. of uh, player of all time. We don't have enough. Caleb, <laughs> Caleb is a big basketball fan. <laughs> well, my ears hurt already. I was gonna say if you can, can if you can hear, hear a picture, <laughs> it's the only picture you can actually hear. Yeah, the the sumo is the. I mean, you could be on eighteen and someone's a mile away and hear this thing. You can hear it all over the golf course. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the Sasquatch Sumo driver, the square driver. I thought this was interesting. That um, what are they marketing here on the on the driver? MOI. MOI. The the fifty nine hundred MOI. You know that's that kind of that max forgiveness before these ten k drivers of this year. Um, you get me a nine degree head in that. I probably match ball speed with my new driver. They sounded awful, but they, they, they but, weren't. But that's that, what I'm saying. They they're hit, fast. Like, yeah, they they were good. Um, now that high launch one with that, you got, you left the <laughs> shaft sticker on it too. Well, you gotta let everybody know you got that A flex in there. <laughs> um, I don't know what are we what are we giving it. Um, I, this for me is gonna be a bogey. A uh, bogey. Yeah, it started the basically the square driver era. It lasted what three years? Four yeah, years. yeah, it was a Callaway years. FT. My the, first ever the driver. FT I. Yeah. Yep, and then the IZ. I mean, Freddie Couples still so, using a three wood FT yeah. five, and then got a little rounded because it it was the worst year of drivers. Is that three year stretch was they were loud, they sounded super hollow, mm-hmm. and you couldn't keep them on the face of a planet. So mm. bogey. I love it because everybody knows it. Yeah. So what are you giving it? Birdie. I'll say I'm gonna give it a birdie just because. I thought we didn't have to. Read. I would go back and I like I'd for four dollars at Goodwill. I'd buy this thing and play it just to annoy the guys I'm playing with and have to listen to well, it all if day you're long. Play, if you're going to play with the group, you really don't care to play right. with. <laughs> That's a birdie all day long. <laughs> That's four dollars well spent. <laughs> Heck yeah. Where do we find these at? <laughs> <clears throat> I 
I don't give a piss about nothing but time. Somebody's trying too hard to like Alabama. Oh, my God. <laughs> you oh might my. be from the town of Greenbow. <laughs> town of Greenbow, Alabama. These are flush because they're mine. Oh, so you're going you're gonna to claim these. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to claim these because these are my wedges. Now, who, uh, who made these wedges? Uh, CC Golf Works. I, I, I would say um, I was just kind of scrolling through Instagram, and a guy that I've been following for a while that – I've known mutually through many tour players, stuff like that. I noticed he started hand grinding and making his own wedges. And I'll be honest, the wedge market's so flooded right now. There's no one's doing anything really different mm -hmm. from each company. And Callaway, I'm a Callaway guy. Callaway hasn't made a good wedge in 20 years. Um, and the wedges that the tour players are playing, <laughs> you don't have different. access to. Um, sorry, I'm just being honest and um jaws raw is terrible and i jaws raw for sales me, plummet for now. me for me so i just wanted to do something different so i'm giving a small business i'm, I'm supporting small business here. nice nice and, and ordered these up they came in you know and they look good, so yeah. we did the stamping ourselves. So. I say, whoever did the stamping just did a great job. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, we all know I don't work on my own golf club, so, of yeah. course, someone else had to stamp them. So what you're saying is there's there, – What I'm saying is I don't give a piss about number of time. <laughs> right, right. There's not going to be a set of jaws with super strokes on it. <laughs> no. <laughs> nah. So no. you're giving it a flush. I'm giving it a flush, absolutely. Right. I mean, they're yours. You got. I think you got to. They're a torched finish that yeah. is going to rust. Right now, I uh, I had him do the grind on my sixty degree. Mm -hmm. That's a T grind, which I don't have at all. Never used. And then my sand wedge is a fifty four degree S grind from Vokey, which that's what I've always played. Right. So, yeah, it's birdie. It's cool. It's unique in the sense of like I like the instead of having the loft, I like how they just put L and S. Yeah. Keep it simple. And, I chose that. Yeah, I mean that's it's yeah. cool, and so it kind of reminds me a little bit of like Corey Paul functional art. Like you can just tell when you get into these smaller batch companies like this that actually do the work themselves, mm -hmm. not produced overseas, and then they just stamp them. Yeah, um, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into like grinding a wedge. I mean that's yeah. not a five second job. So yeah. no, I like them. Yeah, I'm, it was uh, it was interesting to see the grinds that he did on these, and it, I mean, the he did milling a good job. looks really good. Yeah. I know we don't have a picture of the faces, but <clears throat> I, said, I don't know where I he mean, got I'll, his. I'm, I'm gonna. I don't know where he got his wedge blanks from, but like the the faces look good, and then like his work on the the grind looks good as well too. Um, I'm gonna have to give him a bogey though. War damn eagle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't spell war damn eagle. I, it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to go against the grain on the tide. The Bandwagon fans of the Tide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big bandwagon guy right here. <laughs> is that made out of a skateboard deck? Is this a putter? Is this a putter? Oh. <clears throat> it kind of almost looks like an old mashy. Just yeah. Just a little bit. It look, I mean, it looks cool. So this is what you'd call a laminate. It's not a persimmon. So, like, uh, even in that era of the persimmon drivers, you had... Um, your high-quality golf clubs were made out of solid persimmon, and then you had their second-tier clubs that were a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier to get into, were made out of a laminate, basically a plywood. Um, and that's what you see with these different lines and layers in there is the laminate. And um, <laughs> <laughs> But this one's got a little bit of a character with the red, white, and blue. I can just still whipped it. Too. I, I yeah. can just see that grip on my hands, like like the residue. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a leather wrap grip. But yes, some of the dive you sweat, it yeah. might <laughs> might transfer over. Um, I I know we've talked about this in the past. I'm not really into the older club steel. I would yeah. love to play with it. Yeah. Well, this is but. this is a company. What it appears to be is a company that's. Just trying new stuff. It's a like yeah. yeah, trying to make old school golf clubs. I mean, there are people out there now that. Like societies that play with old golf yeah. clubs and stuff like that. So that's probably what this is for. Because it's got a hickory shaft in it, an le old leather wrapped grip. With that, the whipping on there. Hooking? No, I could hook that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I can hook it. I mean, that'd be a slinger. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's cool. I like how uh, so the, left. the actual wrap around that, it's called whipping. It's yeah. something that a, a lot of people don't know how to do uh, in golf anymore because it's kind of a lost art. But like how they kind of made it a little bit taller than normal. 
So it kind of separates the head out, gives a little bit no, more That's about the normal width of whipping or uh, height of whipping. Maybe just that right pitcher makes it look like it's a lot longer yeah. then. But I like it. It's par. Par? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a par. 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 Yeah. I'd give it a I'd give it a birdie. It's different. Yeah, I like the old school stuff. And I like to see companies trying to like make golf clubs in the old way. As yeah. well too. So I think it's cool. Birdie. <clears throat> So we got well perfect well thanks for uh listening to us hopefully this is uh you know the turning of the page for the tours to all come together and sing kumbaya all positivity going yeah, forward yeah. positive right. positive like a merry-go-round up and down <laughs> round and round circle <laughs> positive <laughs> block out bad so appreciate you guys listening if you haven't already uh subscribe to the page uh turn on those push bell notifications and we'll catch you on the next one peace it's always one of my favorite things you have to go on Positive. It's like a mirror. <laughs> it's up and down, round and round. It's circular.